how to learn Svelte. If you have been curious about Svelte, if you have been uh, somewhat, your interest has been piqued and you wanted to learn Svelte and you didn't know how to get started and you're not willing to invest the time without knowing uh, what amount of investment you might need, then this video is for you. Okay, so in this video, we will discuss uh, how long it might take. Uh, we will not discuss why you should learn Svelte because I'm assuming you already know, want to learn Svelte. I will probably do a separate video on why to learn Svelte. What are the good reasons to, to give you some motivation and what a beautiful, wonderful framework it is. And I do believe that every JavaScript developer, every front end developer, every web developer should definitely learn it. But we will not go into the reasons why. Okay. And uh, we will also not be teaching you Svelte. This is not a Svelte tutorial, okay? This is a, a guide. Hopefully it's a complete guide to how to go about learning Svelte. After watching this video, you will know uh, how much uh, time investment you might need, what are the resources available, what tools you will need, what resources you will need, what's your roadmap, your plan, your outline of how you're going to do it. And then what to expect, you know, there are some tips and there are some pitfalls and there are some things that you should uh, know, uh, you know, um, you, how long does it take to get the first, um, just over getting over the hump kind of uh, knowledge. And then uh, how long does it get to get any good at it? Uh, what, what much, how much time I will have to invest? All those things we will discuss in this video. And uh, keep in mind that the, this presentation that you're looking at will be linked from the video. So therefore you just look at the show notes, the video description, and you will see a link to this presentation. It'll be available to you. Okay, so my name is Jitesh Doshi, and I will uh, be showing you how to get started with Svelte. Uh, I have this YouTube channel called uh, youtube.com slash spinspire. Uh, so I hope you get uh, inspired by Spinspire uh, to learn Svelte. And uh, so I have a couple of dozen videos on Svelte, maybe more. And um, I, I have uh, been, been creating lots of tutorial videos so you can see other videos and do subscribe. Okay, um, let's get started on how to learn Svelte. All right, be, prerequisites. What do you need to know already before you uh, start learning Svelte? Well, I would say you need to know basic HTML and CSS. You also need to know basic JavaScript and, and the basics of a DOM tree, the document object model, and the events that it can emit like on click or on change, um, on input, you know, those mouse over, the, uh, the on submit of a form, all those basic basic idea of what, how that works, right? You should also know what a DOM and document object model is. You should have used a little bit of JavaScript within the browser. And if you happen to have uh, to know uh, more JavaScript, that's great. If you know jQuery or Ember or any of those JavaScript frameworks, fantastic. If you, you do not need to know any other UI framework though, like uh, uh, React and uh, um, Angular and Vue.js. Um, in fact, uh, you know, you, once you learn Svelte, I don't think you should need them unless your employer or your client requires you to use those frameworks. I think Svelte is more than sufficient for all your UI framework needs. Uh, keep one thing in mind though, Svelte is a UI compiler and not a UI framework for runtime. So that makes uh, Svelte even more powerful because all those things that the other frameworks do at runtime, Svelte does that at compile time, which makes Svelte very much more powerful and uh, better performance. And smaller frameworks, Svelte is the smallest layer on top of HTML, CSS, and basic JavaScript that you need to learn. And it's, by the way, very easy to learn, very short a learning curve, very simple, um, but gives you all the power and performance uh, with minimal API surface area. So uh, let's get started. Uh, so the prerequisite we looked at and then what tools are you going to use? You are definitely going to use Node.js, NPM, and maybe NPX. So uh, Swell doesn't require you to run Node.js on the server at runtime but it does need, you do need Node.js uh, installed on your development machine 
so that you can uh, compile Svelte. Remember, Svelte is a, is a uh, compiler, not a runtime framework. And with Node.js, uh, when you in download and install Node.js, this, by the way, is a link. All these uh, blue text in this presentation they are links so you can click on them and download whatever is needed so when you download and install node.js it comes with npm and npx npx is like npm but it downloads and executes programs rather than just download them like npm now um, in terms of code editor uh, you will need vs code uh, now you can use other VS, uh, code editors yes sure uh, you can use VI or you can use Notepad, but I, I think you would be far less productive in those. And VS Code is an excellent uh, code editor and it has lots of extensions. And I, in fact, I would say not only you should get VS Code, which is this, you should also get an extension. So if you click on this, there is a Svelte extension. So I highly recommend that you install and enable that. Okay. so. That's VS Code. And then for your development and testing, you should use uh, Chrome or Firefox. And uh, both of these uh, browsers have excellent dev tools, developer tools built into them. Uh, if you have never used Chrome or Firefox, then uh, you probably have other problems. I mean, Svelte is not the first thing you should be looking at at this point. Um, clearly, you need to learn the dev tools that are built into these browsers. All right, next where to get started well obviously the best place to get started is svelte.dev so this is the uh, here's the website svelte.dev this is the flagship website it's the most important website in the svelte ecosystem uh, this is where you will find tutorials in svelte and uh, the api documentation some examples and quite importantly the REPL. REPL stands for read evaluate print loop so this is basically in-browser tool that lets you do Svelte development and do some experimentation with Svelte. And then you can see the result of that experimentation instantaneously on the right. On left, you write your code. On right, the code runs as soon as you save it. Okay, so on svelte.dev, you will see tutorial, the API docs and repls. So the tutorial, this is the tutorial. The tutorial is organized in uh, chapters or sections and subsections and there are 70 18 or 19 uh, such uh, sections and you should and each section subsection also has exercises that go with them and these exercises you can do uh, right you know it, it gives you some instructions you read those instructions and then you ex perform them uh, the system doesn't check your work but if you are if you don't get the desired result that the instructions are describing then um, and you are confused how to get it right then you can always click show me and then show me will uh, will of course show you the actual solution i would uh, recommend that you resist the urge though to to see the solution so just reset or never click show me and then you know do it yourself um, so when you are going through this tutorial I would say uh, allocate one full day for the tutorial. Um, it, when I did this tutorial for the very first time, it took me about four hours, five hours, but I skipped over lots of uh, exercises. In fact, I skipped over many of them. Uh, I simply read through the content and I didn't uh, uh, do many exercises. That's because I, I'm experienced in so many other frameworks. So I kind of uh, understand what they're talking about. Uh, otherwise, in general, I now if I were to do this again, I would do most of these exercises. So I do recommend you to do most of these exercises. So it'll take you eight about eight hours uh, when you go through the tutorial, uh, doing the exercises. Again, you don't have to do all the exercises, but many. Now you can skip some of the sections, and uh, you, I like I said, you should do most of the exercises. Now, what uh, should you? Do and what should you skip? I would say almost every section or chapter, but you can probably skip motion, transitions, and animation chapters. So if I go here, uh, the chapter number nine is motion, uh, 10 is transitions, and 11 is animations. These three uh, you can skip. I skipped them myself and I have not missed anything. Uh, so I think um, 
you know but if you are interested specifically in motion transitions and animation like some some like in browser great game or animation program then yeah by all means read that but i i didn't and i still haven't so and i'm okay so i guess it's all right so um once again this is the best tutorial i have seen ever in a and an open source project. So uh, the people who created this did an excellent job. Uh, kudos to them. And uh, I, in my videos, I try to find things that the tutorial either missed or didn't uh, explain properly, or maybe for an audience that simply is more visual. They just want to see rather than read. So that's what, otherwise the tutorial itself is, is excellent, so good that you almost don't need anything else. All right, so how you can you you will do all your exercises in the REPL here. Oh, I mean the tutorial has a built-in REPL, so you'll you'll use the REPL in the tutorial. You might even do some other experiment experimentation by uh, using this REPL. But w once you got started, you're not going to do your coding in REPL. You should be doing your coding in VS Code, like here, right? And like I said, install the Swell extension. Now, once you do those uh, things. Um, how do you create a project? So there are two ways to create a project. One is you can just go to REPL and uh, click this download button. So I click the download button and it downloaded Svelte app eight because I've downloaded it several times before. So it, it put a number in there, but now this got downloaded and there is this folder. So I can open this folder in my, um, in my uh, VS code. So there it is. Uh, if I go to downloads and Svelte project, um, Svelte app eight, right? So this is the app. So I open the folder. Now to, to test, compile, run this thing, I have to open the shell. So hopefully you know how to use open the shell in uh, VS code. Uh, I simply press Control shift reverse tick, but there are other ways to do that. Uh, probably terminal, new terminal like, like this, right? So, okay, so you do that. And then you can run npm install. npm install will download and install all the dependencies that package.json is mentioning. So um, again, if you don't know anything about package.json or npm, and then you, you still can learn Svelte. You don't really become a master of NPM. You just need to know that package.json is the file that tells NPM what are the dependencies and the dev time, the runtime dependencies and development time dependencies are. And those are already there in the package, right? Then it uses this uh, uh, bundler called rollup. Uh, but again, you don't need to worry about it. You just run npm install. And after you've run npm install, you can run npm run dev. This is, so you can see those scripts in, if you have installed the extensions properly, you will see npm scripts uh, being shown here. And one of the scripts, uh, script targets are build, dev, and start. Uh, so build is for compiling for production, start is for running for production, but dev is what you will do most of your work in. So hit dev, either you can run it like this, npm run dev, but that will occupy your shell. If you don't want to occupy your terminal, just click on the play button in front of dev here. And that starts the server, uh, the dev server. So it's compiling and once it is done, now it is done. Um, it, and it's running on localhost 5000. So now you go to point your browser to localhost 5000, and that brings up your hello world, uh, the, the project that you downloaded. Now I will uh, strongly recommend you to use this kind of a side-by-side -side split screen view. Um, so you can do this in uh, any operating system, uh, Windows or Mac OS or Linux. Uh, so this way, you can make small changes to your code. Let's say uh, you go to src app.svelte and make a small change. Let's call, let's change from world to changes, right? And if I do that, then, you know, I can see the changes. So this is, uh, this is hopefully good. Uh, it, it shows you your changes immediately. All right. So, 
this is one way to do download the zip file from REPL and then just open the folder in VS Code. But once you get the hang of it, this is not how you're going to do anything. There is a better way. And the better way is uh, npx digit. So let's look at npx digit. You basically open the shell anywhere and cd to the uh, to your dev svelte or any directory where you're going to do uh, development and say npx dgit and then you point dgit basically is a is a is a program that will clone a git repository and then it will remove the git database from that repository and only keep the working directory so the one that we want is github.com slash svelte js slash template and uh, but you don't need to say all this if it is from github.com it simply assumes that and you can skip that part so dig it spelled js slash template and then point it and give it the directory where you are going to um, you want the project cloned so let's say hello swelled one or something like that once i do that i can open it in uh, vs code i go to jitesh dev swelled sorry Svelte, and then hello Svelte one I open that, and now I do the same exact things. I can do npm install, uh, npm. By the way, you can do npm install directly by right-clicking on package.json and run install like this in the side window, and that does the npm install. Once that finishes, you can simply click on dev, uh, the play button in front of dev, and that will run your dev server. So if I now reload, you get a nice little hello world and you can make changes to this hello world again, just like before, go to app.svelte and make some changes, you know, I don't know, I'll remove this and put a dot, dot, dot in front between these two, I save and instantly the changes are seen on the right, okay? So these are the two ways uh, I recommend the second method for creating a project, especially for your practice. Now, what to expect? Well, like I said, you will spend one full day on your tutorial. Uh, and the tutorial is this one. Like I said, you click on tutorial, you go through every chapter and sub chapter, a section, etc., subsection. And then um, you can skip, like I said, um, 9, 10, and 11, which is around motion transitions and animations. And you should generally try to do as many exercises as possible, and that would take you one full day at least. Then you should, once you've done that, you can you can practice for a few days, part-time, you know, evenings, weekends, you know, a couple of hours a day. And it would take you probably, I do expect, I do recommend that you do it in pieces, uh, give yourself a little break between um, practicing. That way the learning, uh, your brain will absorb the learning. It'll, your your mind will, uh, will think through it and, and uh, understand the implications of what you learned. And that, that, imp that makes your learning more robust. And uh, then if you get stuck, you can always use the community. And the community is right here on svelte.dev website. There is this uh, chat icon, this uh, this one. This is a link to the Discord uh, chat. So yeah, so this is where, uh, so if, you, if I go to the Discord app, so there it is. This will uh, give you a chance to uh, chat with, so you know, once you log in and everything, you register and log in. So I, so the, I'm already a part of it, but I use the Discord desktop application. I don't use the browser-based app. Any case, so use the community. You can ask questions. They will help you out. It's a very beautiful community, uh, you know, very helpful people. Um, you will find me in there also. You can look for Jitesh. Okay, and uh, so that's, that's the community on the Discord chat. Um, now, there are a few tricky concepts. Um, so like you, it, these are the concepts that took me uh, a couple of, uh, you know, days maybe to understand. Uh, so one is the synchronizing with the view update uh, using tick. So tick is a, an API function that returns a promise and you, you have to await on that promise in order for the, uh, updates to the, remember, the updates to your your DOM screen through the UI 
to finish. And remember, uh, Svelte is a reactive framework. So uh, you make changes, to the, the data changes in some way, and the UI uh, immediately reflects those changes. But it's not exactly immediate. There is a slight delay, to be exact, 1 60th of a second. Uh, and that, if you want to wait for that delay, you um, synchronize yourself with the tick. So await and then call tick. Um, you do that. And again, I have a video. I have a complete video on this tick uh, concept. So you can you can look that up on the Spinspire channel, which is youtube.com slash Spinspire. Now, the other things are server-side rendering. Svelte is usually used in the browser, but sometimes it is used on the server. In fact, uh, there are frameworks like Sapper uh, that, and Routify that do server-side rendering. And then that server-side um, uh, rendered HTML page comes to the browser, and then it starts off right where it left off, and then uh, it starts interacting with the user. In order for that to happen, you have to do something known as hydration. Now, again, this is fairly advanced concept you don't have to worry about it in the first month at least and then finally slot properties slots are basically uh, you'll see once you go through the, the tutorial slots are very useful and very powerful they allow you to include child content within Svelte components uh, but this slot properties not only allow uh, you to send props from parent to child the child can send props back to parent as slot props. And that is something that took me a couple of days to understand. So so a few, so once again, what to expect? Spend one full day on tutorial, and then a part-time a few days, maybe, maybe a week or so, um, but only part-time. By that time, I think you will have enough confidence that you can write um, most Svelte applications. Yes, and you might think that I'm underestimating. Um, but no, I'm not. Uh, there's very little to learn in Svelte. Svelte is very easy to learn. Okay. All right. So one thing when you are doing practice projects, uh, don't don't distract yourself by trying to build the whole back end. Also, uh, focus on the front end. Uh, Svelte is a front end framework. So focus on the front end. And uh, then from the front end, you'll be making Ajax calls for which you will use the browser's fetch API or Axios, whichever. I do recommend fetch though, uh, more than Axios. But when you are calling an API, don't start writing an API on, on your server side, on your backend. In fact, have no backend whatsoever. Make it uh, front-end only app. And then use some of these APIs that are publicly available on, on the internet. So there is Chuck Norris joke API. Uh, again, all these are links. You can click on them. So that's a fun little API that you can use for doing simple uh, testing. Also, there is slowly, slowly, I guess, slowly API that basically takes any API and then puts a delay in front of it. So this is very useful when you want to uh, want to simulate real world delays, etc. And you can you want to program them. So slowly is the name of that API. Again, this is a link. And then there are a whole bunch of public APIs available. This link is on GitHub.com and it shows you a bunch of public APIs which you can choose from and write sample projects on. And then finally, if, if for your front end uh, app uh, to look good, and if, if you want to include some images, you can use pixum.photos. It's a, it's a nice little service that gives you images in various sizes and colors, and uh, you, know, you can make it black and white uh, or monochromatic if you want, and so on and so forth. So the, this is a very nice uh, little uh, service. Okay. And then once you have learned, you've spent the one full day and, a, and a few, maybe a week of uh, part-time learning, um, what else should you be doing? Well, you should, uh, um, like I said, join the Svelte chat, but, and you might want to learn Rollup, which is the bundler tool, and uh, Sapper. So Rollup is a bundling tool, like I said, you know, there is a rollup.config.js, and, and I have a video, by the way, a very detailed video on how um, on my channel, there's a, there's a complete explanation of how Rollup works for Svelte projects. So I recommend that you check it out. And then there is Sapper. Sapper is a is a is a very nice framework uh, for it's the backend and frontend combined framework for Svelte frontends. So it basically is like Next.js or for React or Next.js for Vue. 
it it gives you routing it gives you server side routes and pages and and layout wrappers and a uh, lot of lot of features it even gives you um, uh, you know prefetch um, and preload methods etc so you'll have to look at it basically learn sapper if you need if you want to write node.js backend apps with Svelte frontend, then you should use uh, Learn Sapper. Um, the other framework that you should learn uh, is Routify. Now, Routify is a client side only uh, version of Sapper, you could think like that. So, Routify is similar to Sapper, but it is client side only. There is no server side in Routify. It just at, at build time, it will compile your routes and let you create again pages uh, and static pages uh, in Svelte as well as uh, you know um, compile those routes give you server side rendering give you hydration a lo lot of features it gives you almost everything that sapper does minus a server side api uh, like i said join Svelte chat there is Svelte society so you can always uh, i recommend i encourage you to uh, go and join Swell Society. So Swell Society is, is an online organization and it has chapters in many, many cities. They organize online meetups and uh, so if you want or online conferences, etc. So if you want, you can start a, a chapter on in a, within your own company if you want. But uh, if you just want to attend the events online, then you can just attend any of these uh, Swell Society events. Okay. And then finally, I recommend, I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, youtube.com slash Spinspire. My name is Jitesh Doshi. My company's name is Spinspire. And my YouTube channel is also called Spinspire. So I hope you get inspired to learn more about Svelte from this video. And I would love to hear from you. Uh, your experiences maybe i didn't get something right uh, the the document this whole uh, presentation will be linked from this video in the video description and uh, commenting will be open so i want to hear about your experiences learning Svelte in the video um, comments as well as if you think find any errors in this presentation document you can comment on the presentation also so I hope you this was useful to you. I hope you are encouraged and psyched to learn Svelte. And um, hope you keep learning and uh, stay curious. I will see you in the next video.